in media. So we'll kick things off with, with an introduction. So if each of you can just tell us your name, your job title, where you work, your college major, and a favorite Cal food spot. Let's start off with Yvonne. Cool, yeah, so uh, it's nice to be here with everybody. My name is Yvonne. I am, I recently, I was just letting uh, Heidi know I'm starting a new position on Monday as community manager at a company called Mountain. It's spelled out M-N-T-N, but pronounced Mountain, and they build advertising software. So that's really exciting. I was previously at um, Healthline Media, so they produce health content as the internal communications manager. So I'm kind of in, in, in a little bit of a limbo right now. Um, my favorite food spot at Berkeley, I was there, I think, um, two year for, or maybe it was my last year at Cal when Taco Sinaloa was, uh, they, they opened the store there. We used to always go out to Oakland. Like we made it a field trip to go out to Oakland to get Taco Sinaloa from the taco truck. But when it was at, at Berkeley, that's sort of my, my go-to spot now. And I think that was it. Did I answer all the questions? Please. Yes. Thanks, Yvonne. Let's go to Rosie. Hi everyone, I'm Rosie. Uh, I currently work at Netflix and I graduated at UC Berkeley in 2014. So to me, it's been some time. And I was just telling them earlier before the call, like the world was so different back then. It's just crazy, but anyways, yeah. And I studied rhetoric in college, which I'll get into a little bit more. Um, and my favorite spot to eat in Berkeley, there was a lot, but there was this one famous pizza and I can't think of the name, but it's um, it always has a line. It's closer to like north. Is it Artichokes? North of campus? No, I had to, I used to go there. I used to go there after night out with my friends. Um, or the one that's open to like three a.m. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh, no cheese board. Of... Someone just commented cheese, cheese board. board. Yeah. That, Gosh, that place. Yes, is good. <laughs> I miss cheese board. That was like my treat yourself pizza, you know, because I didn't have a lot of money going to college. But yeah, that was that was my spot. Did I answer everything? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Rosie, for sharing. I think after hearing you both, I'm starting to get hungry. <laughs> um, so let's we, we definitely want to hear more about your path. So um, maybe Rosie, let's start with you. Can you briefly share your career path? And you know, what do you do now? Whoa, yeah, it's been a path. <laughs> so I, like I mentioned, I graduated in 2014. And when I was at Berkeley, I originally wanted to be a civil rights lawyer. Fairness is my number one value. And I've always had a social justice heart. So I wanted to make a career out of that. And so I started studying rhetoric, specifically public discourse, which focuses on politics and governance theories and all that stuff you know, to prepare me to go to like a big law school and all that. So I started interning at different law offices um, and decided that that was definitely not for me. I couldn't see myself being a lawyer. So after I graduated, I started working at Kaiser Permanente, where I was promoted from intern to a community relations coordinator, which actually introduced me to the nonprofit world, because essentially my team and I were managing grants for nonprofits. So we would give like thousands of dollars to different nonprofits who were doing public health work. And then that's how I ended up getting into nonprofit. I started at really small nonprofits where you really do wear like 10 hats. So you're like social media manager and you're the accountant type of thing. And I did that in the Bay Area. So I worked for um, the cause of the nonprofit was workforce development for youth, working with foster care um, youth who were actually leaving the system and needed help getting jobs because they were just on their own after 18. I did that for about a year. I love that work that I actually got a fellowship to go to South America for a year. So I went to Uruguay where I was doing the same work there for one year. And that was very difficult. It was fulfilling in that I was really living in that community. So I got to really meet a lot of people in that area. I got to learn a culture that is very different from my own. Um, I'm raised by Mexican parents. So Uruguay and just South America in general is just very different. 
Um, and so that from that moment on, I just knew that nonprofit work was not for me because it was really hard and it's a lot of hours. Sometimes you don't, in my case, I didn't really, I didn't get any benefits, which the older I got realistically, like I needed health benefits. I needed a 401k. And I just knew that I had the realization that you really don't need to necessarily go into nonprofit work to do social justice work all the time. Like you can actually promote good in whatever industry that you're passionate about. So then I was unemployed for five months when I got back to the United States, really finding myself. And I got an opportunity to go into recruiting at BuzzFeed. So I was a recruiting coordinator there. And then I got recruited to Netflix where I specifically worked on the recruiting team for our content and physical production teams. So that's where I got to learn about like TV and film and how Netflix creates TV and film and how we buy scripts and develop them into like some of the series that you now see on our service. And that completely opened up my eyes and made me decide to go into TV and film. So now uh, I'm in my fourth year at Netflix, I specifically work to help my team find talent, which we call below the line talent. It's like folks that work on production crews. And then we also try to find emerging directors, showrunners and writers who, who are specifically from underrepresented backgrounds to work on our shows and movies. This team is brand new, <laughs> but so we're really busy at work doing that because diversity in film and TV is something I'm really passionate about. And I'm really excited that our company is prioritizing that. And that's where I'm at. <laughs> and Rosie, I really like that you talked about this pathway. A lot of students think that you have to know what you want to do with your career. You have to have it together. But you showed that you started off in law, you kind of ended up in nonprofit, and then now in media. And so you're really showing that there's so much you can do um, and that the path doesn't have to be fixed. The other thing is a lot of students, a lot of our students want to do impactful work and they feel like I either have to do nonprofit I have to make a choice, but you sh you're reminding students that there are possibilities where you can combine both. Absolutely. And I'm a huge advocate of career pivots because we're humans and we change. And we, the further we go down in life, the more we realize talents that we probably weren't aware of before. Exactly. I love that. Yvonne, what about your career path? and what you're doing now. So uh, speaking of pivoting, I think I started practicing this when I was an undergrad already. I was undecided when I started at Berkeley. I had, an, I had an idea of what I wanted to do, but I just changed my mind all the time because I'm a firm believer in trying something out at least once, figuring out what aspects of it you like and building on that. And so what I did, I was the, the person taking 101 units because I couldn't decide what classes I, I really liked. I At one point, I thought I was going to be a peace and conflicts uh, major. Then I was like, maybe psychology, oh, maybe ethnic studies. Um, and then eventually, my junior year, I because I started doing internships in the field of marketing and nonprofit social impact work, I was like, oh, I really like the field of marketing. I like the business side of this. And at that point, it was way too late for me to even apply to the School of Business, right, at Berkeley. But I wanted to, and, and I had already had one major that I was decided on, and that was my Native American Studies major. I don't think I said this, but I was a Media Studies and Native American Studies double major and education minor. So I'd been working on my Native American Studies major and education minor. And then I had this spark of, I really am into marketing and business and that's what I want to do. I didn't know like what career or anything. I just, it was an interest of mine. And again, I was too late, but I realized that a lot of the classes that I could take under the media studies major really mirrored what I would be exposed to in uh, 
business school, maybe not to the same extent, but there were some marketing, marketing classes that I could take there. It provided me the foundational knowledge for how to talk about uh, marketing, what, what aspects of, of media that I wanted to focus on, because there's a lot under the media studies bucket, right? You can do film, you can do directing, you can you know, go into marketing, events marketing, all that kind of stuff. And so what I ended up doing throughout my journey at Cal was pairing my classes and my education with external kind of uh, internships or uh, volunteer work wherever I could. And that's not to say you should do it because being a student in its own is already a really big thing to, to do. But if you have the time and if you have some time to explore, I would do that because it pairs really nicely, you know, experience with actually what you're learning in the classroom. And you get to dive into a little bit more of what you actually like. So upon finishing um, at Cal, because I was a double major, I thought that, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to take that extra year. As a double major, you get, you know, you get the extra year to, or a semester to do, to take your extra classes. I was done already, but I was like, I'm just going to take the extra semester because I don't know what I'm doing. But I, at the same time, was applying to a couple different things. I applied to a fellowship at Uber, where I ended up being on their diversity, equity, and inclusion team that was about a week old. And so I learned a lot about implementing DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion throughout a tech company when they really didn't have anything at all. And so that was a really eye-opening experience for me. And I realized I really like that kind of work, but there's a lot that goes into implementing something like that when, there's, hasn't, when it hasn't existed ever before. Um, and while I was at Uber, there were some opportunities to go into the field of maybe uh, recruiting at the time, right? Like there was a position open, but I didn't want to necessarily do that or focus my attention on that. And so I decided to uh, work at a smaller agency. It was a media agency where I did events and experiential marketing, which is essentially creating events and experiences for people to, to be a part of. And I realized that's what I really like that too. I like a combination of right bringing people together, creating experiences in community for people to feel good and safe and happy and just connected to one another. And then that led me to uh, what was my current position at Healthline Media. I was the learning and development coordinator at first. I started off as that. And for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with learning and development, it's an internal function to the company that basically focuses on employees, personal, professional development. And so you implement programming to make sure that people feel like they can grow within their careers in, at that specific company. And that transitioned me into being internal communications and internal communications, I describe it now as it's marketing. It's what people, you know, the internal communications field, especially right now with everything that happened is at a point where everybody, everybody and their mamas need an internal comms person, right? And a lot of people are trying to figure out how to do it in a remote world or kind of hybrid approach and all of this kind of stuff. So internal communications is a really exciting field to go to be a part of right now. And you can really pioneer a lot of the initial kind of initiatives that, that happen and go on within internal communications. Um, my job, that the job that I'm starting on Monday actually combines pretty much everything that I really like. It's a community manager position and it's internal communications. It's the marketing aspect. It's the community building. I'll be implementing social impact, pro uh, the social impact program for the company that I'm working for. And it's just exciting. So I feel like that was all over the place, but that's sort of what the human experience is like, you know, and you find different things of those different roles that you do and the different internships and the classes that you take that you really like. And it'd be nice to say, eventually you find exactly what you're supposed to be doing forever, but it likely is something that will evolve. It'll be continuously evolving and you'll figure out things that you like even more. And, you know, like Rosie said, one opportunity opens your eyes to an entirely different opportunity that you didn't even know existed, right? Like I didn't know tech companies had DEI. I didn't know they had learning and development. I didn't even know what internal communications was, right? But I somehow ended up <laughs> landed in, in these positions. Yeah, Yvonne, I liked how you talked about, you know, being undecided and then having, taking advantage of these opportunities to, to really see what you like, you know, what you want to incorporate in your next roles, and also how you were able to leverage, like, this is what I'm learning in media, and how that could translate to marketing. And I think that's really helpful for students to hear. 
Um, yeah, thank you. I mean, I, I thought I was like, gosh, I'm never going to do the, the business thing anymore. Um, and media studies was exactly what I needed at the at the time. I, I recently graduated from a master's in business. So you can always do it afterwards. But in the moment, it was what worked out for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also important for students to hear because students might be interested in business related careers, but they think, oh, I'm not in Haas or I'm not getting the right training, so I can't do it but you both show that you can certainly do it. It's just the experiences, right? And how you can leverage your skills and talents. Um, so how have these experiences prepared you for a career in media? Yeah, I could jump in so much. <laughs> so my official, what I officially started in media was in 2017. And I started in talent acquisition. So from 2017 to 2021, last year, I was specifically in recruiting. And now I'm officially in the TV and film department. So de definitely two different worlds. But everything I learned in recruiting, such as how to talk to people, <laughs> it's just like very basic things. But for example, um, how to assess talent. That's something that you learn in recruiting. Um, and it, that goes beyond a resume. That's assessing talent when you're speaking to them. It taught me how to network because Hollywood is a very relationship oriented place. And you'll find that across the board, whether you're working at a studio or you're actually working on production, you'll find that having the ability to learn how to create authentic relationships and Authenticity is just such a huge thing for me because I've heard the term fake it till you make it so many times, but I, it doesn't work for me. And <laughs> like, I have to, I really value authentic connections. And I think those are the connections that are really going to help you in your career. Um, because sometimes people can also tell, like, if you're just connecting, you know, for the sake of like, they have something you need or whatever. So that's what recruiting taught me. And honestly, working a nonprofit taught me to be resourceful and it taught me to be very creative with what I have. Because when you work in nonprofit, sometimes you won't have all the fancy tools or softwares or, or even technology to carry out your duties, but you learn how to get creative. And that really does take you, that's what helped me in my own team. My team is new at Netflix. It's called Creative Talent Development. And so when you're working in a new team, uh, you gotta be really scrappy and you have to quickly learn how to juggle a bunch of different responsibilities. Um, but yeah, I would say that. And then even just like my studies at Cal, I mean, Berkeley, I can't, I can't tell you all the government theories that I learned, but it really taught me how to think smart like work smarter, not harder. <laughs> I mean, work hard, but you know what I'm saying? It's like to think critically is what Cal gave me. And that's something that's just priceless in my field now. And I think Berkeley, I'm already a nerd anyways, but I think Berkeley really amplified that. So me jumping into a career in TV and film, you kind of have to be a nerd. You have to always study your industry. Like I have to study TV and film, things change all the time in the industry. And so I think having that ability to think critically and then studying rhetoric taught me how to read really quickly. And so that's what I apply in my job today. The ability to read quickly. You were truly blessed. <laughs> Um, I was actually, it's funny, I wrote down critical thinking because that's one of the things that I wanted to highlight too, is that I think that throughout my undergraduate career, because I was in a little bit of a, I knew I really wanted to study business or I wanted to somehow involve myself in that industry without, uh, I mean, media studies isn't necessarily like a direct um, plane ticket, for lack of a better term, there, right? But what it did do is, again, combining your experiences with what you're learning at the same time and realizing that those things actually help you be a better person. I remember one of the, one of the things that um, at a freshman orientation, 
the speaker said was we have we put so much pressure on ourselves to define what we're going to do and define ourselves by our major that then defines our career path and i think what you're seeing from both of us now is that your career path is going to go like this no matter what right i mean there's just it just happens it kind of just naturally happens that way and so what your undergraduate degree provides you is a perspective right and so while i may not remember the exact page of that one reading with that one fact what i do remember is the ideas of what i learned about how to think about things and how to talk about things and how to apply those things over to different things right critical thinking is also about bridging and creating connections and i think that that's what your experiences allow you to do and if you want to go into the into a media career it's super important bridging storytelling creating connections among people right people want to be talked to and treated to like people right because we are we're all people especially right now we're all craving connection and wanting to be really connected to to something bigger than ourselves right because i mean I, i'm alone <laughs> right now in my apartment but i know that there's an entire world out there right and so um my experience has really prepared me for that this version of me that can now go out and create and help cultivate relationships and create a community where people feel seen where people feel heard and um have fun while doing it i think a, a career in media is really really fun uh, and it, it it can be really stressful it can be a lot to to handle but it's also really really fun and there's so many different parts of of media that you could go into and each one of them has their own little kind of you know like you can go into pr you can be a newscaster right like um I found I found my love for public speaking and for just talking to people through the things that I've done and so now I do a lot of with within the work that I do I do a lot of consulting within my uh companies with our senior leadership team when they're about to talk to people right and how do you make someone listen to your message um when you're not necessarily engaging with them all the time right so yeah uh answer to that I agree Ivan with everything you said and I also wanted to add something that's so important I have worked on it and continue to apply it in my career is patience because often time you'll meet folks that want to go from 0 to 100 in like a day but my you know throughout my career I I did not graduate Berkeley and then ended up at Netflix like right away it took like 5 or so years and I didn't even know I was going to end up at Netflix um but I'm grateful I did cuz the company really aligns like with my own professional values um but yeah everything you want said and um, and I say patience to patience in developing your own talent and patience in getting up the career ladder because nothing's worse than for example stepping into a manager role and not having the know-how because some of the some of the jobs you'll have after you graduate they might not always be like right away director vice president but they all add up to that like you have to learn for example you know I'm starting off as an assistant because I'm new to TV and film but this is where I'm learning how executives work how do TV and film get made you know and so don't ever you know feel like you're far behind cuz you see someone is a vice president already what's for you is already yours so just have patience and enjoy the ride yeah i love that rosie like both of you have shown that each of your roles have contributed to learning and getting you ready for your next role and that it is a process and just to have fun with it right both of you also mentioned uh, authentic relationships cultivating relationships a lot of students want to do this but don't know how to do this right how do you network um and do so authentically to build your career i can go first in saying that i would consider myself a people person but a terrible networker if that makes sense once we're in the room together and we're talk like i will never i mean i will i often times will it's harder for me to be the first person to go up and talk to somebody um but once we build that connection i'm like you can't get me to stop talking and i want to listen and hear about everything that you've got going on too right and so 
One of the things that I used to do when I was an undergrad, because there are a lot of opportunities to go and network, right? I joined uh, Hermanas Unidas when I was on campus. I joined a couple of different other, like a dance uh a dance club as well, because I was like, oh, I kind of like dancing. And I mostly did it be to meet people because I knew that if I didn't do that, I wouldn't actively go up to people myself. And so I had to put myself in a situation where I almost didn't have a choice but to talk to people and, and but to network. Um, and then again, you know, once you get comfortable with them, you just start to, to form these, these connections. So it's a little bit of putting yourself out there and outside of your comfort zone and not not too not crazy right you don't have to do something extreme it can just be as simple as signing up for that one newsletter getting their events going to to an event or seeing if somebody wants to go with you and just going from from there so taking up taking the the opportunities that there are to network on campus and outside of that i mentioned that i had internships and volunteer opportunities that i sort of that i engaged with and I had coworkers, I had, you know, um, like the director of the nonprofit that I worked at uh, was called Boss and he directed social their social impact program, right? And so building connections with people then in an authentic way to me means actually being genuine, right? Like if you truly don't have like an interest or you're just like, God, this is super, super forced, don't do it because I think that does shine through, right? You know, I talk about in public speaking when you're talking about the things that you love, or you're talking about your expertise and your knowledge. People can tell when you're being genuine, and people can can sense that. Um, it's the same with networking, and there is no one formula. At least I don't think so. Um, I mean, I don't know it <laughs> for everybody that that works for being like, hey, do this plus this plus this. That is your most authentic self because you kind of change from time to time, and you know, from you know, talking to to people. But I would say putting yourself out there and putting yourself in situations where you almost have to network a little bit and remaining true to 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 your why, right? And you may not even know your why in that moment, but what is it that 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 person can also get? From, from you in that interaction. It's not so much about like taking, but also about giving and contributing to, to that space. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Yvonne, I, what, I totally agree, especially when it comes to being really intentional with meeting folks. Um, I always kid around with my boyfriend, like, oh my God, I feel like it's kind of hard to make friends as an adult because, you know, you, we don't have, I mean, well, now we're working, I'm working remotely. I've been working remotely for 10, for two years. Um, and so it, it's kind of hard to, it is kind of hard to meet people right now. Um, but one of the things that helped me when I was in college was actually making really good friends at Berkeley. You know, one of my friends at Berkeley actually is the one who connected me to my job at BuzzFeed because she was working there at the time and she knew she knew my work ethic, she knew what I was about, and she gave me a really great recommendation and thankfully got the job. And I feel like that's when I realized that the connections that you do make at Berkeley do matter. Um, again, and one time I used to do acting back in the days, but not professionally, just recreationally. And my acting coach once told us, you know, be yourself and you'll meet the right people. And he was speaking in the context of like auditions and getting your first agent and whatever. And I still carry that with me to this day, because it's so true that even when you're interviewing, even when you're like going to those events or joining a type a different type of club of interest, when you are yourself, you'll really meet those people that just click with you. And you never know that down the line, you guys or you all can just help each other with different opportunities. I'm a big fan of community and building community with your friends, colleagues, um, and even folks that you might meet at a dance club or at a softball club or something. Having that community and keeping in touch with each other is what actually kind of helps you in your career too. Yeah, and I like what you said with community, right? Just being yourself, but not seeing it as a networking thing, but just showing up supporting each other, helping each other out. And I think that seems much more human and relatable to a lot of students. So we're gonna have one final question before we 
uh, go into a quick Zoom poll and then we'll open things up for Q&A. So all of you have an opportunity to ask our guests here some of your own questions. So the final question uh, for the panel is, what do you love about your work and what do you find most challenging in what you do? Uh, I can go. Um, what I love about my work is that I'm so grateful that I get to do a career at a company that I admire. Um, just to have a career that's so in line with my own personal and professional values. Uh, I couldn't ask for more. And so I guess just having that is already for me a huge blessing. It's what I love. I'm always excited to go to work because I know that the programs and the work that we're rolling out will make a tremendous impact when it comes to diversity and who gets to tell like what stories and things like that. But one of the things about my work is that it can be really, really busy. You know, sometimes, sometimes I will be working on a project at like 8 p.m., which is sometimes not all my work will fit in nine to six. You know, when we were working in person, sometimes there were events that I would attend that would go on to like maybe 11 p.m. So that's what I would say is probably like, it's not always nine to six, although most of the time it is, <laughs> just there's days that are not. Um, and also, you know, I'm currently an assistant. And so there's the there's a lot of fun things we get to do. Uh, like I said, I think like attending an industry events, at least prior to the pandemic was fun. And you get to meet a lot of, you know, different people with all kinds of backgrounds, that was fun. But then there's also like the mundane administrative stuff that you gotta do. You know, you got to keep your calendar clean. You got to, you know, make sure that your executive that you're supporting has a clean, smooth day. And that just involves a lot of back end work administratively. So there's like the administrative part that you got to do. And sometimes that takes a lot more time than the fun, creative stuff. But it's not like that every day. Um, but yeah, that's all I can think of. Well, um, I think that for me, the, the thing that I love, and I think it's the theme of this call, right, is the community building that you can create through your words, through your actions, through the spoken word, right? Uh, a lot of what my role was as internal communications manager at Healthline Media and kind of bleeds into my current role is hosting the company-wide meetings. It's about talking to people and engaging with them constantly, being in meetings and facilitating those meetings and truly forming connections with people because, well, it's my job, but also because I actually like it. So how cool is it that I can actually, you know, create relationships with people in this way? Um, and then the other part about my work that I like is that in an, a, as I mentioned, in the field of internal communications, there's just a lot of room for testing and experimenting with what you try. In the internal comms field is where marketing was maybe years ago, right? There were a lot of companies trying to, you know, they're like, yeah, that looks cool and visually it looks nice, but like, what's the return on investment? How, how can I actually measure that that advertisement, my, my people, the people that I wanted to see it saw that advertisement, right? And so there was a lot of back and forth with marketing where people saw the value, but really didn't see the value. Um, and so I think internal communications is in that same space right now where you have the ability to one, talk to people like their people, engage with them, but also experiment, right? One of the things that I implemented was instead of having an email newsletter go out with a list of initiatives, right? There's a platform that allows you to uh, create a digital magazine. And so people can actually flip through things and physically engage with something that's digital, right? So I love the experimenting and the creativity that comes alongside with being in my field. Um, something that I find really challenging though, especially right now is continuing to cultivate those connections from peer to peer, right? So you have uh, programming in place for people to attend, but if people don't go to the events or if people don't, you know, there's, there's nothing you can really do except continue to communicate with them. And I think the other thing about being in internal communication specifically on the internal side of a company and a business is 
as as proactive as you'd like to be and as much as you'd like to plan out your days and your communications and all that stuff, you have to leave room to be a little bit reactive. And that, I think that's true for a lot of careers in media, right? PR, all that stuff is you kind of just have to be expecting the unexpected to happen and to throw your plans off a little bit and for you to be able to respond to the things when you need to or write a quick email um write the talking points for for the president because he needs to go into a meeting in two hours right that's the kind of uh the the, the, the part of it that i find a little bit more challenging but all the same i i love it right it all cultivates to the things that i do love about the about the work <laughs>